Okay, you should tell us. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Leticia here again for another edition of my weekly Money Matters webinar series. And uh, as I announced earlier today, today's topic is real estate joint ventures. And I have the pleasure of having as my guest today, the lovely Mandy Branham. Mandy is an experienced real estate investor that I know from the Ontario real estate investing community. She has won multiple real estate investing awards. So, uh, and, and in addition to that, she's somebody who specializes in joint ventures. So she's become affectionately known as the JV queen. <laughs> I love it. Um, and, you know, even though we've spoken about real estate investing on this webinars before, uh, this will be a deeper dive into what is a joint venture, when joint ventures are appropriate um, as an investing strategy, and how joint ventures may be a benefit to those of you who are looking to get started with real estate investing, and maybe that you just haven't gotten around to it yet, okay? So, um, I hope that's enough of an introduction, Mandy. Feel free to add anything, and um, I know you also have some slides for us. Anything to add, Mandy? Second. There we go. Um, no, that's a great that's a great intro. Oh. Welcome, Mandy. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Leticia, for having me. I know we might be far away in distance. But uh, we constantly meet at the same at the same real estate events. So so that's really cool for us to be able to have you know such a history of all these different locations and events and and learning times that we've been together. So so yeah. So my share is uh, I'm happy to be able to chat about joint ventures. What is a joint venture, and why would you need a joint venture? Who needs a joint venture? Um, and and when would we when would we enter into it? So um, I can hop right into it if you want. Do you want me to share my screen now? Sure. Okay. Apologies everyone for the uh, background noise. I'm gonna try to mute myself when I'm not speaking. Um, I'm in a public place uh, in search of a better Wi-Fi connection. Um, I will make you host, Mandy, so you can um, share your slides with, with, with okay. us, okay? Okay. Uh, and welcome Vic. Vic is also joining us via Zoom. Um, and those of you watching on Facebook, uh, thank you. While Mandy is sharing her slides, we're not able to see any uh, questions you may have, but please don't be shy. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. Um, same goes for you, Vic. Feel free to uh, ask any questions in the chat. And uh, yeah, okay. take, it, take it away, Mandy. Let's see here. I'm just uh, going to share my screen. I need to open this up here. Let's see if this matters. Okay, Zoom. Share my screen. Here we go. Okay. I'm gonna go full screen here on this. Can you see that? You can see that? Yep. Okay, awesome. So I've, pre I've prepared a slide to be able to describe what a joint venture is and, and also some different ways that if you are considering a joint venture or you want to enter into a joint venture, you kind of have some of the variables to understand what are the what are the things that we can split in a joint venture what are the tools and the resources that joint venture partners or co-venturers bring together to be able to make a real estate deal happen okay so um i'll start off just a little bit about me i definitely so my name is mandy brenham aka the joint venture queen and i am very passionate about real estate you know, I could be falling asleep at night and somebody and my hubby brings up the conversation of real estate. I become alive. This is a high value that I have. I also have a high value on wealth awareness, you know, diamond rings and Maseratis. And, you know, I'm always curious, where do people get their wealth? How have they built their wealth and how are they maintaining their wealth? What are they doing to be able to earn this wealth? married for 18 years i got two kids so you know on top of real estate i do have a whole other little uh life on the side okay i invest in various cities in ontario right now um i love to hike with my dog okay so uh, 
Uh, let me just see. So simple principles for growing your wealth. I'm starting to see if this is there. This Mandy, do you want to, uh, may, may I interject for a second? Do you want to, um, okay, that, that's what I was going to suggest that you go in presentation mode. Perfect. Okay. So sim some simple principles for, for growing your wealth. And this is very much specific to real estate. And Leticia, you know, I know Leticia teaches these things. These are, you know, basic wealth, wealth fundamentals, but you know, um, you're, it's, you don't want anything. You don't want to get rich quick. There's, you, you know, there's a lot of sometimes, you know, strings attached to it. We're, you know, she's teaching, Leticia's teaching, we're sharing, real estate is a massive one. This is a long-term game, okay? So a long-term game, or you can say for a long-term gain. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. That's a big one for me. I really want you to know that as much as we're learning about real estate, we're learning about wealth, I want you to be able to raise your personal self-worth at the exact, at the same level that your net worth will be able to go up. Because to tell you the truth, your net worth will never exceed what you believe your personal self-worth is. So we're always, you know, my shit, for me, I'm constantly having to build my self-worth to be able to ensure that my net worth can continue to grow with me, okay? Um, and Warren Buffett's rules, never lose your money. Uh, and rule number two, don't forget rule number one, okay? So what is a joint venture? Who needs one? So I look for joint venture partners or I perceive that people that are looking for a joint venture partner is somebody who loves what they do. They're an inspired business owner. They are a dedicated employee. They are an active parent. Um, they are somebody that might've had an inheritance and doesn't understand investing doesn't want to learn investing and that's okay because there are experts out there for you to be able to talk to a financial planner. I'm like a real estate financial planner. Um, and so if you, who needs a joint venture is somebody who wants to get into real estate, but doesn't want to spend the time looking at properties, learning about real estate. How do I, where should I, you know, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I've got all these fears and they never end up pulling the trigger. Okay. What am I looking for in a JV deal? So I want you to start to pick up some of the things that I'm going to share. You're looking for a solid partner in a joint venture deal. Whether you are the working partner, such as myself, or a financial partner, either way, you are looking for a solid partner. If you're a working partner, you want your financial partner to be very secure, to understand that their job is secure, that they understand the risks that are involved, and that they're not going to you know, leave and, and, and walk away from the deal. So you're looking for some security. From the financial partner over to the, over to the working partner, the working partner needs to show up. What you're looking for is somebody who's engaged and, and, and is knowledgeable in real estate. Somebody who loves what they do, who's active in real estate, like not this part-time partner. You want somebody who's full-time in real estate, doing this all the time, knocking on doors, masterminding, going to real estate groups, listening to phenomenal podcasts like this, okay? Where do I find a joint venture? Phenomenal podcasts like this. You want to be around like-minded people. You want to be able to know that you are talking the same language to somebody and that you, they understand what it is you, what you mean when we say, what's ROI, what's after, what's ARV, you know, how do I calculate these things? So you're looking for people who are starting to be aware of the language. And when do I need a joint venture? You need joint venture partners before you really need them. And you need a joint venture partner if you have been talking about real estate and thinking about real estate and thinking and talking and looking and thinking and talking and looking and you're missing the action piece. Sorry, I know the connection is not very stable, Mandy. So if, if my... Sorry, yeah. Yeah, can you can you still hear me okay, Mandy? I apologize. I know uh, the connection is a little unstable. Yes, I can hear you okay. It's just sometimes uh, okay. Wonderful. So so I know because you were talking about the working partner and the financial partner, and people listening in may not know where that comes in. So so uh, I'm glad to see that the next slide explains all that. Awesome, okay. 
Awesome, awesome. So this is kind of a semi breakdown of what a financial partner would bring and what a working partner would bring. And maybe if there's some comments on Facebook or there's comments, Vic, if you've got some comments, I'm happy to be able to, to jump in here. I want you to kind of self-identify which side of the coin you'd be on, okay? So what a passive investor or a passive financial partner would bring, you're on this side here. You need to qualify for the mortgage. You need to bring all the capital for the down payment, closing costs, renovation funds, and a reserve fund. And if you need to start a corporation, because that's how you're going to hold your assets, then you're responsible for that as well, okay? So pretty, pretty small side when you look at it. The financial partner also needs to be stable, needs to keep their income, needs to you know, know that they're not going into any kind of, of, of bankruptcy, things like that, okay? That's just kind of on the side. On the other side, the working partner is re required to do a heck of a lot more. And that's, that's the active side. That's the side that, you know, you are on the ground, you are finding and negotiating properties. You're sending documents, coordinating with your power team. Who's on that power team? You got a lawyer, an insurance broker, a mortgage broker. You could add a real estate agent in on there because a real estate agent is one of your major power people. And um, you're creating the joint venture agreements. You are managing the assets. So you are constantly looking at how can I bring this asset to its highest and best use? Are you renovating it? Are you making sure the tenants pay you? As the working partner, you are also doing the project management. So you are making sure that the contractors show up on time, that the electrician comes in at the right time. And so any renovations, the working partner is a project manager. You're also able to manage the property manager, okay? So I'm not saying that you have to manage the toilets, but I'm saying that one of your roles is to manage the property manager. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're making sure that the tenants are paying their rent every month. And that if they don't, the property manager has given them the correct N uh, forms for non-payment of rent or, you know, how to receive the rent. You're also uh, responsible for the bank account, bookkeeping, and the, prep, the proper uh, forms to be able to do tax preparation. Whew! That's a pretty long list for the working partner. And so, you know, some other things that I share that aren't on this list, but I want you to kind of be looking for in a, in a working partner is they have confidence in the market that they're bringing. So they are a market expert. They are also, they've got a vision for what the asset is going to be. Are you buying this ugly property and you're renovating and it's going to look beautiful when you're done? So you're, you're bringing vision, you're bringing, you know, what your, what the potential of this property is. You're bringing your trades, you know, do you have an electrician, a plumber, a contractor, an HVAC client? So all those things are what come into play for the working partner. And again, if that sounds exhausting to you, well, then maybe you'll find yourself on the passive side saying like, I don't have time for this. I love my job. I'm engaged at my job. I don't want to be going and looking at properties and figuring out renovations and doing cost structures. I would rather just partner with somebody who does all of that. Okay. So there are a variety of ways to split a joint venture. You can split a joint venture 50 50. Okay. You can split a joint venture 60 40. You can split a joint venture 70 30. And you can split a joint venture nine, potentially 90-10, okay? And there's a variety of different things that we can split, okay? So first of all, you can split the equity, which means if you buy a property for 100,000 and it goes up to 200,000, you've got $100,000 worth of equity. How do we split that? 60-40, 50-50, okay? You can split cash flow. In my scenarios with all of my properties, my properties all have positive cash flow. Some not enough to leave your job, others a significant amount to be able to say yeah. it will. You, you want that. Yeah, positive cash flow, right? Yeah. 
So we are, so in this, you can split cash flow. If maybe one partner wants, you can go 50 50. Maybe one partner says, I don't need the cash flow. So another partner gets all the cash flow and the other partner doesn't. So that can be a negotiation tool in your things to negotiate. Property management duties who's going to look after the tenant? You know, maybe you're both on title, maybe you both put some money in, but one person says, I'm closer to the house, so I'll just manage it. Well, that's a good negotiation tool that you might have. Project management fees. Maybe you are wanting to pro uh, partner with a contractor and the contractor's like, look at, you're gonna have to pay my contracting company. So I'm not negotiating the cost of my contracting, but I will be the project manager for you. So that's one of the things that I can bring in is project management fees. How are you gonna split cash injections? Ooh, we don't like to talk about that too much, but it definitely happens. I always explain, you know, a tree falls on the roof. In my case, it's, you know, a sewer line backup and you've got to dig from the road and into the house. And it's a great thing to have done to your house. You don't have to worry about it again, but that was $12,000 for us to repair a sewer line plus the cleanup in the basement. And we had to split that. There was no sewer line backup in our insurance note to sell. If you can learn about what kind of coverage is good and what's there's not. And that was fine. But how are you going to negotiate cash injections? In that case, we each split the cost of that sewer line backup 50 50. Okay. So that was one of them. And then the term of the negotiate, the term of the joint venture, that's up for negotiations. Is this going to be a flip? which is going to be done and gone and sold in under a year? Is this going to be a, a three to five year joint venture where we're like, you know what, I want to do this. I want to get started. I want to learn, but I want to watch and work with somebody who's going to show me how to do this. And in five years, I'm going to do it on my own. Great. This is a five can be a five year joint venture. Or is this like, uh, this is an inheritance money. I don't need it for another 20 years. Take it, go and invest it. And, and in 20 years, I'll show up and, and we'll be able to share this stuff. Okay. Oh, oh, oh you're frozen there. So uh, I did do a scenario. Oh, I want to, I'll go back here. Okay. Okay. So in my scenarios, oh, Leticia, you've gone, uh, you've gone frozen, but I hope I'm not frozen. Nope, you're still good. Okay. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, so option one, uh, Vic, I'm glad you're here. Option one is 50, 50. So we split everything 50, 50. What I'm looking for is somebody to bring the ca the capital for the down payment, closing costs and renovation funds. And what we do is we split cash flow 50, 50. We have a 5% property management fee, cash injections are split 50, 50. And equity is only paid after the capital, the original capital that my partner put in has been paid back. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, 50-50. I don't wanna make it sound like it's you know boring or whatever, but that's a pretty straightforward way. I always say my bookkeeper likes 50-50. It's very easy to account for. It's very easy to see in the bank account when cash flow payments go, you know that there are equal payments out of the bank account. If we had to put cash injections in, it's equal payments kind of coming in. So it's pretty straightforward. If one of the partners needed some cash, so if a working partner was like, look, I quit my job or this is what I do full time and I need some money or you as the working partner want some money, then maybe a 60-40 split would be good too. Well, look at this, Leticia is. Hi, you want to just listen as I do this? Amazing. Please go ahead. Yeah, because mine, uh, just say that um, we lost the T-shirt. Uh, I'm going to continue. And then you can just spend one, one time. Sorry. And then take my, this mic connection is very unstable. It's just going to keep. Uh, okay. Dropping, okay. No problem. Thanks, Leticia. Just, okay. I'm going to put you on mute. You'll still hear me. Um, oh, no, that's not really. Anyways. Okay. 60, 40. In this scenario, I still proposed a 50, 50 JV split of cash flow. 
okay? Uh, 5% property management paid to a management fee could be paid to a management fee, a management company that the working partner has, or could be paid to a third party company. Cash injections are split 60-40 and equity over and above is split 60-40 um, as well. So really the difference in this one was that there was an $8,000 fee paid to the working partner to be, to be the working partner. That's all just to be, you know, to be able to put food on their table, to be able to kind of keep them going for the project that they were going to be managing in this asset. Okay. 70 30 is for somebody who's got a significantly high income. Okay. So let's just say the financial partner is a lawyer who makes, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. And they're like, oh, Mandy, I really don't need any cash flow because it's just going to get added on to my income and I already have enough income and I don't need to be taxed at that high tax rate. So I really don't need cash flow. So why don't, why doesn't Mandy take all the cash flow? And I will take a larger percentage of equity at the end, which means Mandy gets a smaller percentage of equity at the end, but Mandy gets his cash flow along the way. Okay. Um, so there's 100% of the cash flow paid to Mandy. There was also going to be a management fee uh, paid to me for the project management. Um, and 5% of gross monthly rents will be waived in option three because I was already receiving all the cash flow. I wasn't going to, I didn't have to worry about paying property management fees. Okay. Cash injections for that tree that falls on the roof um, would be split 70 30. And any equity over and above the original capital, it would be split 70 30 as well. Hey, just a quick question. In, in this scenario, in option yeah. three, um, is the initial investment equal or is it still 70 30 in terms of the like the down payment or the initial capital yeah. we put up? i'm gonna you know what vic i'll be pretty clear the financial partner always puts in all the capital right okay okay so in my scenario the working partner never puts in any of the capital great okay so the financial partner is always putting in all of the capital all 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 the other the working partner no capital to be able to be put in thank you thank you that's a good question okay um but in saying that when i at the bottom here when it says any equity over and above the initial capital investments okay meaning that let's just say in this scenario that the partner had to put in a hundred thousand dollars when we go to sell the property at the end of the five years, the first hundred thousand is paid back to that financial partner. And then we split equity in this case, 70, 30. Okay. So this, right. okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. 80, 20, pretty straightforward. You're seeking a mortgage qualifier. You're seeking, so let's just say that I have $200,000 and I mean, oh my gosh, I'd love to buy an asset, but I can't qualify for a mortgage. Why not? Maybe I'm maxed out with the banks. Maybe I'm going through a divorce and have some situations. Maybe I'm self-employed and I've chosen not to be able to you know, show a lot of income, okay? And so you are looking for somebody to be able to qualify for a mortgage. And for that qualification, you could offer them 10 or 20%. I'm kind of like, you know, in this, like you could do either one, but the value is in the fact that your 200,000 can't even buy you one house really at $200,000 cash, but $200,000 can buy you a $800,000 house with leverage from the bank. So the value of that mortgage qualifier is massive. And for that, you would pay them a percentage of equity, okay? Um, the mortgage qualifier would not be responsible for any cash injections. Uh, they, they don't get any of the cash flow. You might wanna pay them like a finder's fee, a signing fee, um and they have nothing to do with the day-to-day -day transactions nothing at all okay they're going to get a mortgage statement every year you're going to give them uh you're going to give them tax documents but uh they really don't have anything to do with the asset other than qualifying for a mortgage now my share on this is disclaimer i've not done this one i would do it with a family member like you know cousin um, brother, sister, if need be. But the, the share is if you found, uh, you know, let's just say you find a nice young professional who has a great job and has had a great job and you've got this $200,000, 
Well, what is one of the first things the bank asks for is to see that money in your bank account for 90 days. So for your brother or cousin, you know, you're going to have some sort of connection to them you, because you're going to have to open a joint bank account to be able to put your $200,000 in so that it shows in that bank account for 90 days for this person who can qualify for the mortgage but has no money to be able to qualify. Okay, so my that's my share and and you know please like you know this isn't like Mandy told me to um, you know really make sure that you're interviewing that you know who you're getting into into a mortgage bed with into a mortgage qualification kind of um, is situation breakdown joint venture with okay so I did have this this was this this entire project was brought up because a JV partner said to me. Well, Mandy, what if we didn't want to do a 50 50 what are our other options and at first I kind of got my back up and I was like, ah, I want 50 50 and then I was like, thank you for asking me that question because it made me go into and look at what are the other ways that we can split this pie. And so um, the example was that we were buying a $250,000 property, they needed $50,000 for the down payment $50,000 in reno. Um, and option, well, so option two and three, they would have had to pay me $8,000 for the project management. And that would not have been included in the, the $50,000 renovation budget, meaning that like that wasn't gonna be paid back to them afterwards. Um, and the refinance value of 350,000 uh, post, post renovations. Now, wink, wink, we actually got 385,000 on this exact on this exact project. So we did way better than we had anticipated. Um, numbers are based on 10 years, 10 years worth of mortgage payments, all this kind of stuff. So here's how it played out. Okay, here's how it played out. So I was able to say to my JV partners, uh, with a $50,000 investment and a $50,000 uh, down payment or renovation costs and down payment, these are pretty much the scenarios sharing cash flow, uh, not sharing cash flow 50 50 cash flow 70 30 or 100% cash flow to Mandy an $8,000 project management fee I know there's a lot of back end numbers but it's what it looked like. If we split the deal 50 50 both partners at the end of 10 years would have 144,000. That is uh, Vic anticipating that the JV partner got back their 100 grand already. And this was the equity over and above that original capital. Okay. So each partner got 144. If we did 60 40, would be 159 for my JV partner and only 129 for me. Uh, and 70 30 was going to be 149 for my partner and 135 for me. So I actually came back to them and said, I'm happy to offer you a 50-50 joint venture or a 70-30, but I'm not interested in a 60-40 split. And so they took the, all this information, they looked it over and they said, you know what, we're just going to stick to the 50-50, okay? And yes, they made less money than if they were to have done 70-30, but they wanted a little bit of cash flow along the way. They just kind of wanted to know that that was there. Even though I was willing to do the 70-30, take less equity at the end, but have that consistent cash flow along the way. So sometimes my share is if you are a working partner or a financial partner, I really need you to know what it is you need to get out of a joint venture so that we can make sure that the property matches your goals. Are you looking for cash flow? Are you looking for, you know, I don't need this for 10 years. Uh, I want financial security. I want diversification. I'm scared in the stock market. I'm done in mutual funds. So let's get some diversification in here and real estate's a great one for you. So I think that's it. That's all I have. I don't know uh, where Miss Leticia is or not. But um, Vic, ask me some more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's, uh, it's just you and me. <laughs> perfect, perfect. My first, uh, my first podcast I'm going to host here. Um, yes. yes, you are hosting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it. I'm now the host. Um, actually, th so that, that, was, that was pretty comprehensive. I guess in your experience, um, what are the, I guess, I, maybe I, you've already answered this, but I was trying to understand like, what are the agreements, what are, what are the types of agreements you get into the most? Um, maybe one question. And the second question, choose to answer either one, is what are the risks associated with going into a JV? 
Perfect. Love your questions. Thank you. Um, so I typically do 50 50. I do 50 50 because again, it's just simple, straightforward. The tenants put income into the bank account. We pay for all those expenses, mortgage, taxes, insurance, utilities, all those kind of things. And at the end, there's cash flow and we split that cash flow. And so it's very, it's very straightforward that way. Um, I think it's pretty fair. I have offered a couple partners a 60, 40 split in my case, 60 for them, 40. And then I joke and say, but I'm not sure they're willing to give up that extra 10%. So let's just stick with 50, 50. Um, what are the risks? Great question. You're, if, if you're a financial partner looking at a working partner, because I, I actually like to share that both my presentations, you can be either. You want to be like me, you then listen to what it is I'm doing to attract fi uh, financial partners. If you're a financial partner going, who do I choose to work with? Great. Then listen to you know, the other side of what we're doing. So for a financial partner, a risk of getting into a joint venture partner, a joint venture is, is this person know what they're talking about? Do they have a proven track record? Do they have a history? Do they understand the real estate ups and downs? Are they speculating? Is, you know, are their numbers true? Do they understand their numbers? This is so not emotional. This is so driven based on the numbers. Um, are they a problem solver? You know, you're going to find yourself in some weird, sticky situations, you know, snow removal guy disappears off the earth and you know are you are you in a joint venture partnership with somebody who's like oh my god i can't handle this see you later i'm going to florida or are you just somebody who's just like yeah okay i will uh i'll do some research and i will find us a new snow person well there's going to be an extra cost yep okay there's going to be an extra cost didn't see this one coming couldn't have figured this one out but no big deal we got this I think you're really looking for another risk is to get into partnership with somebody who doesn't have some financial stability. Now I'm saying this on both sides, okay? Because I, you definitely need your financial partner to be stable. You need to know that this isn't their last 100,000. So that's a big risk if you are putting all of your money into a, oh my gosh, it's gonna be a get rich quick. And they're looking, they're like, oh my gosh, um, can I, can I have an update every day? Can I, you know, make sure that this is what's going to be best for me? And so you, you, you're like, okay, that's a little bit of a risk is that somebody's trying to get returns too fast. On the other side, the working partner, I, I, I'm financially stable. And I think it's really important to find somebody who has financial stability, even though they are the quote, quote, working partner. You want to be able to, you know, make sure that you're like, oh my gosh, there's an extra 50 bucks in the account. Can we do a 50, 50 split of that cash flow? And you're like, uh, no, like, no, we're not splitting $50 worth of cash flow at the beginning of COVID. So what's one of the risks, you know, at the beginning of COVID, <laughs> I got really strategic. I was like, okay, buckle down the hatches. We're going to be in for a bumpy road. What are we going to do to create financial stability ahead of us in an unsure market? Okay. So you're like, how can you become stable in an unsure time? Well, we collaboratively decided that there would be no cash flow payments and that we would be accumulating all cash flow in the bank account. Okay, so creating a nice reserve fund. So a risk is not having an, a big enough reserve fund. Absolutely. Like 5,000 is my new zero, depending on how many properties and the amount of units, it absolutely can be more seven, eight, $10,000 is, is you know, like, is my new zero. Um, so your, so we buckled down the hatches. There was no cash flow. What else did I do? So a risk is that you've got, you've got somebody who's, you know, managing the manager of the asset, but they're still very distant themselves. They think that the property manager just actually cares about the asset. Well, they don't, okay, they don't care about the asset the way that a partner would care about the asset. So, um, so I chose to call every single one of my tenants. And I called every tenant and I was like, hey, it, you know, Amanda, I'm the owner of your home. I hope everything's okay. I just want to let you know that I know there's a lot of uncertainty in the, in the, in the, on the globe right now, but we've got some resources. So if you need to know how do I apply for unemployment, what do I do? Please don't stress if your rent is going to be late or you don't have an income right now. We're all in this together. And so we chose to, 
you know, be, be together on this adventure. And so I had actually connected with all of my joint venture, with all of every single one of my tenants. So a risk is that you're working with somebody who's so new that they don't understand some of that, you know, just what do I do in a situation to, to keep my head above water, to stay ahead of the game, um, to kind of be proactive, you know, construction costs have gone through the roof. What do you do? Well, what are our options? Great, I'm glad you asked that question. Let's talk about our options, right? It's never really black or white. It's how many different steps along the way that we'll have to be able to solve these problems. So, so that's definitely some of the risks. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great answer. Um, so thank you, thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. If you have no other way oh, of getting questions. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Vic. There's like 50 other people on the call with us today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were serious for a second. I was like, oh, you got those Facebook questions. Great. No, we're good. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, again, just I guess based on your experience, like when you get into JVs, are you doing mostly, you know, are you taking on projects that um, require renos and that are like flip projects, or are you mostly looking at turnkey? Like, what's the What's the balance of, you know, like, like those the types of those types of projects in the portfolios that you're in? Yep. Uh, so I'm going to share a little bit of my growth story to be able to answer that. I don't think there's, you know, I, I want to say it depends. Okay. So I, when I started, what, my hubby was still at his job. And so I was doing this on my own. And yes, I was confident. I had all these, you know, stuff. Oh, cool. Hey, I'm glad. I, I was like, might as well put my, my, <laughs> my camera on. Uh, you need to put pants on first. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I started, I was like, I was just me. And so I took a balance of turnkey assets and minimal like lipstick renovations and full basement suites. And so it would be like turnkey, turnkey, lipstick, full, full turnkey. Like, and so I kind of like pieced them together a little bit. Um, the numbers spoke to me. So when the, when the numbers present themselves that a turnkey asset works, great. If you, you know, there's a lot of times that turnkey assets don't work. Well, they weren't something that I was going to be able to offer to a joint venture partner. So I didn't look at that. Um, I never flip. Okay. I, I absolutely will burr flip to myself, whichever, however you want to call it. But I never got into flipping with joint venture partners because it's a heck of a lot of work and I'd rather not share equity with a joint venture partner on a flip. I'm happy to bring somebody in as a private money lender, but I'm not going to give away an equity position to somebody who in essence is a private money lender. Um, so fast forward, my area here, Simcoe County, the numbers stopped, stopped working. And instead of making them work, I found a new city. And so in that new city, they were desperately in need of units. So we created new units, which was basement secondary suites. That was in Hamilton. Then Kingston came up and Kingston had like zero vacancy, meaning like if there was a unit, it was like fat kid on a smarty, the unit was rented. So what did we do? We went to Kingston and we started to create units because there was no, there was no supply, even for us to be like, oh, we bought a fourplex and renovated it. It didn't matter. There was nobody able to move out of that fourplex because there was no place for them to go. So we created about 13 basement suites in a year in Kingston. Wow. So I'm in a new market right now, not new market, a new to me market. And in this new market, which I'm not sharing, um, is uh, there's a ton of rental stock, but they're all tired and run down and undermanaged and mismanaged. And, and so we're actually buying existing legal units and we are bringing them up to par so we're actually keeping the tenants we're not kicking anybody out we're keeping all the tenants but as they turn over we will renovate those units up to our b b plus uh, tenant profile standard so i think it's really important to know your market know what like the numbers still tell you if this is a good deal and if it's a good deal for you it's a good deal for you to bring to a joint venture partner but you know the numbers will talk the numbers will tell you if this is a deal that you want to be able to do yeah that makes a lot of sense and then like what, where, are our, you, where are you in the world right now i'm, I'm in toronto i'm in toronto oh, i've been thinking about i actually just went to hamilton a few weeks back um look at the same stuff you were looking at so i'm, I'm at the start of my my journey if you will um yeah. And I'm actually just looking at Welland right now. So that's the, okay. 
That's the market mm -hmm. I'm currently looking at. Um, so <laughs> any any insight you have on that would be great for, for selfishly, I guess. No, um, no, that's easy. Welland is a great city for for municipal uh, building code and and inspectors. So you would easily be able to create a secondary unit. The the catch is that you're paying quite a high price for a property in Welland. I mean, it's lower than Hamilton and St. Catharines, but still comparatively quite high. You're going to add a nice chunk of renovation funds to be able to legalize that unit. And you're probably barely just going to get your renovation funds back. So no home runs going on right now unless you find a home run. But a very easy city to be able to do that legalization in. Okay, so it's right. an easy yeah. enough process. And I think that's really important is you don't want to get in with St. Catharines, who is just a shit show city to be able to work in. They're difficult inspectors, hard and like just all kinds of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, and so how long are you typically like you, at one point you mentioned like the term that you decide on, right? So like whether it's 20 years, five years, 10 years, like what are your projects like with your JVs? So we'll buy a property and do an initial refinance one year. Okay. In the first year, we're refinancing the asset, pulling out that money and pretty much giving it back to the JV partners as much, much as we can. Of course, uh, all that capital goes back to them. And then my terms of joint ventures are five years. So in five yeah. years, we're like, hey, how's life? We have this asset. Yeah, you know, it's been performing well. Do you, where are you going? What's your goal? What's your, you know, does this asset match where you're going? Do, does it match where I'm going and what I'm doing? Um, and we can either decide to keep it, refinance it. You can buy me out. I can buy you out or we can sell the asset. Way you go. And I'm, I make it so like unemotional because we, we have a JV agreement that's legal that tells us, you know, if, if I want to buy you out, I'm going to give you a shotgun clause. I'm going to tell you this, how much I'm willing to pay. And you have two options. You can, this is what they describe it as just imagine a pie and you give me the cutter. I'm, I'm taking the cutter and I'm looking, like, I'm going to cut the pie. You have the first choice as to which size, which side of the pie you want. So I can either you know, cut it a little bit, have one bigger piece and one smaller piece, but realistically, you're going to take the bigger piece. Okay. Um, so that's kind of like the shotgun clause. Um, so we've got this agreement on one end of the spectrum and on the other end of the spectrum, we, we have a friendship because we talk about real estate all the time and, you know, your life, we hang out together. We even, I am planning a joint venture vacation <laughs> where we're all nice. going to go and have a tax write-off vacation. Um, but we meet in the middle. And so come the end of our five-year term, you know, I want to be able to have like this human conversation to be able to be like, Hey, you know what? I only wanted to do this until I'm 50 and now I'm done. So do you want to buy me out? Let's sell the asset. Like what's going on? Um, or you're like, look at my kids are going to university and that was the point of this, or I'm close to retirement. I need to sell it now or whatever. I had one guy that said, I'm buying my, I'm buying my girlfriend a diamond ring. So I need to sell the asset. And I was like, sell the asset. <laughs> wow. This uh, must've been a big diamond ring. <laughs> well, and they were buying, of course, after the ring came the house and all that kind of, of stuff. Course. So he yeah, was yeah. ready to take his next steps in his own life. So yeah, that was good. What else? What else are you working on in Welland? Oh, geez. I mean, this might just be like a probably one-on-one -on -one coaching session here. It, um, it really is. I'll send you the bill afterwards. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. Please don't actually, because I don't know if I can afford it. No, it's Not all yet. good. Not yet. Um, nope. So, I mean, so, I mean, I can talk it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the stage where I'm trying to figure out which one I want to be. So I, I have a steady income, a steady, decent sized income. Um, but I also now have a passion for real estate or I'm developing a passion for real estate. So um, your presentation was helpful because I'm trying to decide and, and it could be different for each one. So there's two things that I've run into. One is from a JV standpoint, um, and that's why I asked you about the risks, is making sure you find someone that aligns with what they, you know, th what their expectations are from the project, what kind of say that they have, um, you know, who makes the decisions and all of that. Um, Good point. And so that that's something that, you know, I've gone through in two different very iterations now in the last month, um, just in discussing that. And in one of the projects that I'm involved in, like who knows what'll happen, um, but there's a lot of people, there's a lot of voices and it's- Too many, too many cooks. It's too, wait, yeah, it's definitely way too many cooks, um, but we've sold it to each other as everyone's a JV, sorry, everyone's a working partner and, a, and putting equal amounts of funds in. 
Okay. So everyone has a role to play. We have a lawyer, we have people that work on the numbers. We have people that will manage the, in this case, it's a like tear down construction project. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's interesting and we'll see how this all plays out because it is a bigger project. It's the first time we're all doing this together. Um, and on the flip side, I, I tried for the Welland property is a good example. Um, got into a, you know, verbal agreement with a very close friend, closed the property. Um, then, we, then we're talking about details and, you know, rent, like normal closing cost type stuff, little, little costs that'll show up here and there. Um, and out of nowhere, after offer was accepted, he goes, ah, oh, actually, I only want to put 5% down. We should only put 5% down on this property. I'm gone. Like, that's not what we talked about, right, as an example. So I guess my, my interest in attending today was really just to understand what the, you know, what successful JVs look like. Um, who's the person you're working with on the other end? Like, how do you align with expectations? And how do you make sure that, I mean, even in your examples, it sounds like you also have, you know, a good personal relationship with these individuals. The question is like, how do you make sure you create that differentiation between business partnership um, and business decisions versus obviously the, the personal element and personal side of things? Yeah. Uh, feedback right now. Let me just, there we go. Um, so I, my, one of my first joint venture I'm going to be the working partner and I'm, and we were both working partners and we were both financial partners. That was the last deal I ever did like that. Okay. And I just, it, it wasn't, I'm not, you're almost doing a disservice by not stepping up and being the real estate expert. Okay. But I want you to breathe into that role. This isn't something you take lightly. This isn't something that you're just like, Oh, Oh yeah. You know, I went to one, two hour seminar and now I'm the real estate expert. Okay. But in my world, you know, there, there are people that I would partner with that, that would be fine. But I understand that somebody needs to be the driver and like, it's almost like somebody needs to be, yeah, the driver and somebody needs to be the brake. And, you know, you kind of, you can't have one without the other. They're both important roles, but we can't both be the driver. Somebody needs to be, somebody needs to be the brake. Okay. So you're kind of like, like understanding that. So step into your role and if for you, that could be like a work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And the job would be real estate to be able to say to somebody, I understand that you're really excited. Um, but, you know, what I'm looking for is a passive joint venture partner. I'm looking for a passive joint venture partners. Can you tell that I've added that to my affirmations? Because I, before I was like, oh, I'm looking for joint venture partners. And I was like, woo, add in the damn word passive because I really need somebody to understand that I am the driver. I'm looking for you to be passive. I want you to trust me. But so then as you are asking someone to trust you, you also have to believe that you are trustworthy of somebody else's money, somebody else's hard earned retirement, um, savings, kids that like all that kind of stuff you all of a sudden you are taking on this big burden potential burden of financial of somebody's financial destiny truly and you're like whoa i can't handle it right or you rise to the occasion you're like no i'm 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 able to be able to say that i am the active working expert partner and you start to like i'm an active working expert expert partner i'm the expert i'm the real estate expert okay and, um, and you just step into that role and there's no discussion anymore. There's no discussion. Like all of people say, can I come in? Can I come on to the job site? Yeah, you got to call. You got to tell us when you're coming on. But, you know, uh, one of my early joint venture partners was like, well, we would like to come up and work. And I was like, OK, you want to do demo? Yep, they want to do demo. And I was like, cool. I will text you three days in advance to when demo is going on. And I'm going to give you those dates. And when those demo dates are happening, I'm happy to have you come on site, okay? I text them, they were like, oh, we can't make it. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Demo is still happening. It's not waiting around for your schedule to be able for us to do demo. Oh, but I'm an electrician, I can do the electrical. Oh, but I'm really busy at work and then my kid has a party and then my kid has, and, and you're like, no. No, I'm just gonna hire an electrician. Even though you are an electrician, it's not gonna work for timing here. and being on time and on schedule, on schedule and on budget is more important for me in the role of working expert partner. And it's more important for you being the financial partner that your working partner stays on time and on budget. So we're just gonna, so you can kind of see how many like 
non-negotiables you are putting into the contract here, okay? So who decides on a new fridge or a used fridge? Um, we've got in our joint venture agreement a $500 limit, okay? I can spend up to $500 on issues on the house. Uh, anything over 500 needs to get discussed. So I can replace a toilet, I can put a used fridge in, but if I choose to think that this is going to be a new fridge kind of place because they're great tenants, it's a great unit, um, then I need to get permission from my financial partner to be able to pay for an eight, nine thousand dollar fridge. OK, so you can and you just step into that and your belief is that, you know, somebody the first couple partners that came on board, they were just like. I wherever you're going, I'm coming with you, like because my conviction was just. I'm going to buy a property in Welland. Are you coming with me? Not, I'll go if you go. Well, do you want to do 5% or do you want to do 20%? Well, I'm yeah, not yeah. Sure. like, right? Like yeah, there's a absolutely. lot of back and forth. That, that was actually the exact conversation I had. And then when the other questions started coming up after, I was like, look, I'm just going to do this on my own. And yeah. I actually let them out like the same day. I was like, all right, cool. Sounds like you have a lot of questions and reservations. I'm, I'm going to do this. And now I'm going to go find someone else if they want to come in on it. But Perfect. I think the good, the good thing is the contingency was I could have done the deal anyway. Right. So, Yay. yeah, good. that was so as you're buying properties. I want you to ask yourself, how can I buy this property? And you can do it. Do what can I do on my own with my own money, private money, a B lender, a vendor take back, or can I find a joint venture partner? OK, so a joint venture partner is just one of the ways for you to be able to buy your properties. When you go in there and you're like, I can't buy this property unless I have a joint venture partner, you're it's not the same. So I love that, that you are just like, you know what? I was already buying this. OK, your conviction changed. And now they're going to be the ones in five years regretting the fact that you that they didn't come in on that deal with you. OK, now finding a new joint venture partner, you're going to be able to say, Here's the numbers based on 20%. Well, why don't we do five? Because we're investors and we do 20%. Well, can't, aren't, aren't you going to do some of the work for free? No, this is what it's going to cost for us to renovate it. Because guys, I'm doing this deal on my own. So if you want to come in and have part of what's going on, this is what I'm looking for in a partner. I need somebody to put in half the cash, qualify for the mortgage, whatever it is that you want out of a joint venture partner. That's what you're going to be asking for. Yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. Um, I have more questions, but I, I don't know how long I can go here. So I think we have seven more minutes. Okay, is that, is that, I actually signed up for the session two minutes after it started, so I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad um, you're here too, so thank I you. I found <laughs> it and signed up for it two minutes after it started. Okay, a lot, <laughs> maybe a last question then, or last one and a half questions. Um, when you're, so let's say you're, you're the working partner. Um, yeah. What are some typical returns or not, like, you know, when you're talking through numbers and I'm still wrapping my head around it too, I don't know who's watching or who will watch this, but what are the, what are the typical returns that um, investors would expect um, if they were just providing capital or, you know, I guess the silent partners, if you will. Capital and mortgage, we'll just kind of say JV partner. Sure. Yeah, JV partners, yeah. I don't get out of bed for less than 30%. Yep. So I'm offering my JV partners a minimum of a 15% return. Now, what is that? That's not cash on cash. Yeah. That's not right. It's not the same as what you'd get interest in your bank account. So that's a combination of cash flow, mortgage pay down, uh, passive appreciation. And if I'm doing renovations, that'll be active appreciation. So I call we call it the four ways to win. And yep. that's that's where your return on investment. So you take total cash flow, your total mortgage pay down. Total appreciation based on the value of your asset uh, and lift from the renovation divided by your total capital invested gives you your ROI. I do not get out of bed for less than 30%. I don't offer a deal to a JV partner unless it meets 30% because yep. that's a good that's a good number. Now, I've got a bunch of properties right now under contract. Uh, actually, I went on a bit of a buying spree. I bought 35 properties over the last wow. six weeks. Jeez. Yep. And there's definitely minimum of 30, uh, up to 68, 80% return for a couple, a couple of assets. And one of them has an infinity uh, return, meaning that after the year when we refinance, my partner will get all of their money back. That deal got taken pretty quickly. So yeah, yeah that so that's a typical return. 
I would say that you're like, you got to kind of understand if you're asking somebody for the hundred thousand dollars, they've got options. Do I put it in a GIC? Do I, you know, put it in a private equity fund? Do I, am I a private money lender? Am I the bank? And you know, when you're the bank, you can make anywhere from eight, 10, 12%. So you have to be better than them being a private money lender. If you're asking them to come in to be a joint venture partner. Yeah, no, that, 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 make, that makes a lot of sense. And that 30%, are you calculating that at the end of the five years? That's yearly, annualized. Yearly. Okay, annualized, okay. Annualized, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So cool. good returns, but I mean, you're doing any kind of renovation and you're gonna have a return like that, yeah. unless you're negatively cash flowing, which you know eats away at your return on investment and is not something you really wanna do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes a ton of sense. Well, Mandy, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, Vic, for having me. That was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for being two minutes late and and being the the, the life of the party. So, so Leticia, thank you very much yeah, for yeah. having us on our show. Uh, Vic and I very much enjoyed our joint venture conversation. I hope everybody else got lots out of this. Uh, Vic, you know where to reach me, MandyBrenham.com. If you want to book a discovery call, well, you just had one. <laughs> Well, there, <laughs> there you go. This is what it's like, folks. This is what it's like. Kind of like no BS, real as it can be kind of thing. So Love it. <laughs> well, good luck with things. Reach out if you need to. I'm on social media too. I, I will for sure. All right. Thanks All right. so much, Mandy. You're welcome. That was All awesome. Right. Bye, Vic. <laughs>